winter has come at last. The end is nigh, Bat fans. The finale to What If Tim Burton Directed Batman and Robin starts now. We've made it! Part 3 of our special fanscription event comes to a close here. From everyone on the team who worked on this trio of episodes, thank you for coming along this ride with us. Your reactions to part two were so much fun to read, and we hope you think this is a worthy ending to the story. We left off with Mr. Freeze and a mutated Chip Shrek, aka Blight, burning down Wayne Manor with Bruce, Dick, Alfred, Knox, and Lucius Fox inside. Knox and Fox were safe in the Wayne's basement bunker, but there was no sign of our heroes amidst the smoking wreckage dead to the world, how does the Bat family re-emerge and put a stop to this rampage of fire and ice? Find out right here in Fanscription's Batman and Robin Part 3. Finish things off for us, Malcolm. Later, at a Gotham newsstand, a delivery truck dumps a bundle of papers on the sidewalk. It's the afternoon edition. The headline reads, Fire Destroys Wayne Manor. Wayne's Missing and Feared Dead. We cut to a news report showing footage of police and firemen sifting through the rubble. Pulling back, it's revealed that the action news segment is being relayed through one of the back computer screens. Bruce stands at the computer, arms planted on his desk head bowed in disgrace as the report echoes throughout the cave. Authorities believe this may be related to the recent blood feud between Mr. Wayne and his father's former associate, Victor Freeze. Thomas Wayne's reputation took a major hit last week when- Bruce silently taps a button, shutting the screen off. Alfred approaches with solemn footsteps. Bruce breaks the silence. My father's legacy, everything, is not in the house he built in the people he shared it with. You are that legacy now. The question is, what will you do with it? Bruce turns towards the bat suit. The only thing I can. Around the corner, Dick Grayson emerges in his biker's jacket and a backpack. He inspects one of the lesser beat up spare bikes hanging on a chain rack. With a steady pull, he starts lowering it with the chain. Bruce looks confused. Where are you going? The bike lands. Barbara. Why? She thinks you're dead. He detaches it. I know. I can't do that to her. Nobody can see you. Think you can just waltz down there like the living dead and say, Hey, cancel the flowers. It's a miracle. I'm not going to. Robin is. Robin starts pushing the bike onto the Batmobile ramp. Bruce fumbles through a drawer of keys and pulls out an automatic starter. He clicks it, locking the bike out with a bleep. Robin stares at him, waiting for the inevitable. This is a very dangerous game you're playing. No, I'm done playing. You may be dead, but some of us are still alive. And part of living is taking risks. I'm making a leap of faith. Well, I still got the chance. Bruce stands on the edge of the abyss and stares at the starter lock in his hand. Robin holds his breath. No net. Robin smiles. No net. Bruce sighs and clicks the button. The bike unlocks. Dick hops on the bike, kickstarts it, and nods. Bruce solemnly nods back. Grayson rides off into the cave as Bruce chucks the starter lock into the canyon below. A flock of bats emerges from the abyss and flies over Bruce's head. He stares at them with steely eyes. Later, at Gotham University, Dick Grayson cruises around campus, hidden by his bike helmet. The constant misty drizzle of summer rain further conceals him. A montage unfolds, showing him parked in location after location, scanning the crowd scurrying around beneath their umbrellas. Whether it's classrooms, auditoriums, cafes, or the dormitory, she's nowhere to be seen. Finally, night settles in. Grayson now drives through the thick of a rainstorm, thunder crashing overhead. Up ahead, he spots the stone bridge of University Park. He stops as something catches his eye. Beneath the bridge, the mysterious masked rider takes on two men as an elderly homeless man crawls away. The fight seems to be going well for the rider. Too well. 
She's pummeling the man, clearly unhinged. Grayson sighs. Oh, no. Underneath the bridge, we watch in close-up as the masked rider continues to wail on the young men. It's clear they're frat boys. As they drop, she picks them up again and knees them before finishing with an elbow check. You like picking on old homeless men, huh? Is that how you get your kicks? She kicks one of the frat boys. He collapses to the ground. The bloodied homeless man watches in shock. A slight smile crosses his haggard face. The now crawling frat boy reaches for his baseball bat. She picks it up. Oh, you want to play ball? Batter up. She swings. The boy curls into a ball and takes slug after ugly slug. The rider starts to scream with rage at each hit. Before one final blow, a hand grabs the bat from her. It's Robin, jacket off and suit revealed. He shouts as he flings the bat away. Hey! The bat clunks along the asphalt, echoing down the tunnel. The rider raises her fist for one last sucker punch. Robin stops it in midair. That's enough! He grabs her wrist and holds it tight. You keep going like that, you'll kill him. The two men and the homeless man all stumble to their feet and scurry away in the rain. She watches and then turns to Robin. She whips her wrist away and opens the visor on her helmet, revealing eyes piercing through black war paint. You have a lot of nerve. Me? You know, we're here to stop them, not murder them. Then why didn't you? The rider shoves Robin again and again with each retort. When Freeze burst into Wayne Tower, everyone was left to fend for themselves. We counted on you. We trusted you. I... Robin's back slams against the wall. She beats on his chest, her fists landing on his armor with loud thuds. Where were you, goddammit? She slides back, exhausted, heaving with deep breaths. Robin steps forward. If I could have been there, I would have. Tell that to Commissioner Gordon, who's sitting up there, rotting in the hospital. Tell it to Bruce Wayne, who's rotting in the ground. Tell it... It's clear now she's crying. Tell it to that boy, whose only crime was liking pineapple on his stupid pizzas. Robin's eyes open wide with horror. He steps back. Oh my god. Barbara. Her eyes twitch and open wide. She stumbles a bit, trying to recover her poise. What? Uh, who, who even is- Robin, still in shock himself, shoots back. Stop. I know it's you. Don't be ridiculous. How could you possibly know who I am? Robin takes his mask off. Even the black war paint around his eyes can't conceal the truth. The masked rider pauses, then removes her helmet. It drops slowly to the ground, along with flowing red hair. Her eyes are also concealed in black war paint, but there's no mistaking it. Her mouth drops. Dick? Grayson lets out a resigned smile. You? You're... Barbara begins to break down, her smile of relief switching to fear and anguish. No. No, 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 no. It can't be. It is. She moves up close, staring into his eyes. No. Not you. Why you, of all people? Because somebody needs to. Just like you need to. No. I can't. Not like this. If Jim knew, he'd kill you. He gave the Batman and I the right to exist. How can he deny his own flesh and blood? Barbara pulls back and shouts. Because I'm all he has left! She wipes her eyes, still fighting back tears. And so here I am, wearing this stupid mask to hide it, to drive away the fear that... out there? Barbara stares outside the tunnel. Is a cold, unfeeling world. It doesn't care about him or us. It's just in it for itself. Barbara holds up the helmet. And now, this thing is driving a wedge between us. Grayson holds up his mask. You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe the masks we wear split us in two. But you know what else they've done? They brought us together. And maybe, just maybe. Grayson puts the mask back on. 
That's how we become whole again. Barbara begins to panic. No. This is insane. I have to go. Robin grabs Barbara by the arms, preventing her from leaving. Let me go! He pulls her close, face to face. Barbara turns her head defiantly. No, don't look away. Open your eyes. This... Robin points to his mask. This is who we are. Barbara cautiously opens her eyes and stares into his. Robin lowers his head, meeting her gaze. She soon follows, their foreheads touch. They stand there, leaning into each other, shielded from the storm beneath the tunnel. Meanwhile, in the hulking ruins of Wayne Manor, the storm has let up. A woman steps over strands of slippery yellow police tape. The feet slosh in the ash and debris, kicking up fireflies. We pan up, revealing Selena Kyle, walking silently through the devastation. The faint shimmer of distant lightning flickers against the ruins. Slowly, a pale blue light illuminates the disaster scene. She looks up. A full moon emerges from the clouds. There's a snap. She turns, startled. There, in front of her eyes, is Bruce Wayne, standing still as the dead. Why, Selena Kyle, you look like you've seen a ghost. She smiles. Looks like I'm not the only one with nine lives. What are you doing here? I had to see it for myself. Once again, you never disappoint. <laughs> should see it with the lights on. She stares at the stone fireplace, blackened, but still standing like a gravestone. I'll miss that fireplace. Yeah. Seems like the last time both of us were happy. Bruce approaches her tenderly. We can be. Again. Selena's eyes survey the carnage. A fairy tale come true. She approaches Wayne, almost folding into his arms. Oh, Bruce. You have no idea how much I'd love to. Then, on the flip of a dime, she steps back, her face turning grim. But I'm on the clock. Selena pulls out a yellow envelope and hands it to Bruce. What is this? He opens it, revealing pictures of paperwork and images of Gotham Dam. What you wanted. Needed. Chip was responsible. For everything. And whatever's going down is happening at that dam. How did you get this? She smiles sardonically, licking her lips. I'm a damn good secretary. She corrects herself. Executive assistant. Bruce stifles a laugh and sighs, examining the materials again. I take it you're going up there. She nods. I can't promise I won't try to kill him. And I can't promise I won't try to stop you. Well, then I guess there's nothing more to say, except... She pounces on Bruce with a wild kiss before softly letting go. Happy hunting. She turns and walks off into the darkness, leaving Bruce alone. Bruce stares at a picture of the reservoir. <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat. We cut to a montage of Bruce inside the Bat Cave. He rips the tarp off the Bat Ski Boat from Batman Returns. We see him remove a tire from the Batmobile as Alfred awkwardly rolls another tire behind him. Bruce opens a panel in the Bat Ski Boat, revealing a wheel well. He installs the wheel with the whir of an electric tire iron. He next rubs his fingers along a massive shimmering blade. We see him welding the blade onto a metal extension from the vehicle. He stands by and pushes a button. The blades retract out of frame. Bruce smiles. Next, we see a bat suit being lowered into a vat of warm orange solution. Bruce nods to Alfred, who pushes a button. The vat explodes like the flash bulb of a camera. The suit is lifted out. Bruce punches up the stats on his computer. The screen reads, Radiation shielding. Maximum efficiency. Bruce hits another button. The suit's bat symbol glows the color of liquid hot magma. Another readout says, Sub-zero temperature resistance plus 80%. Satisfied with the results, Wayne turns back to Alfred and smiles. He returns his gaze to the suit, ready for battle. We cut to darkness. The beeping sounds of medical equipment fill the air. From a first-person point of view, eyes open. A hospital room slowly comes into focus. A reverse angle reveals Inca, waking up in a hospital bed. A voice cuts in. Ma'am? Ma'am? 
Inca flings up in her bed. She looks down and finds her arms attached to IV tubes. She looks to her left and sees a kindly looking doctor with a pen and clipboard, flanked by two nurses. What, what, what is this? Where am I? The doctor speaks obnoxiously slow, as if she were a toddler. You were unconscious. You took a nasty spill. You have a concussion. That was yesterday. Yesterday? Oh my god. She snaps to life. Get me out of this! She starts pulling wildly at the IV tubes. Come on! She yanks the tubes out, and blood starts flying everywhere as nurses rush in. Back in the Batcave, Bruce Wayne stares at the Bat computer. Black and white photos of Gotham Dam adorn the screens, along with various maps. He sighs and turns around, grabbing the railing and surveying the newly improved Bat ski boat and Robin cycle. Alfred, meanwhile, stands at the bottom of the stairs, polishing the new Batman and Robin suits in the vault. I hope this will be enough. With all due respect, sir, when time and resources run short, enough is simply what you can afford. That's good advice. Alfred smiles. For a homeless dead man. Alfred frowns. He ascends the stairs as Bruce punches up a new screen on the computer. Freeze and Chip both appear on the screen. Bruce sighs. <sighs> Looks like it's going to be two against one. A voice rings out from below. Not exactly. Bruce turns to see Dick Grayson walking through the Batmobile tunnel. Bruce descends the steps and meets Grayson on the platform. A woman emerges from the shadows, the masked rider. Bruce approaches Grayson. The two stare at each other. Bruce maintains a poker face as Grayson forces a smile. Hey. Hey. Bruce eyes the masked rider silently. Then Grayson. The boy sighs awkwardly. I'm sure you're wondering why there's a complete stranger in the Batcave. Not really. Seems par for the course around here. Bruce glares at Alfred. Well, you're in luck, because she's not a stranger. Bruce, say hello to Barbara. The masked rider takes off her bat ear shaped helmet, revealing Barbara Gordon. Bruce stutters and blinks. He points to both Dick and Barbara. Is it you? You? Your? Barbara shrugs and looks away, almost half embarrassed. Yeah, I'm the bad girl. Bruce stares at them for a second, mouth open in amazement. He shakes himself out of it. I just, I, uh, who knows about this? Just us. Yeah, what about Jim? Don't ask. Don't tell. Bruce turns away for a moment, then flips around and points an accusing finger at them. Do you even realize how dangerous this is? Hey, I can take care of myself. Oh, really? Grayson rubs his jaw, as if it were still sore. Yeah, trust me, she's got moves. Bruce puts a finger to his chin, mulling it over. And what if I say no? Then I guess the Gotham Globe has quite the story. Bruce smiles. What if I kill you? Oh, for God's sakes! Then where's the justice in that? Bruce turns his back on them, lost in thought. Robin steps into the center, behind Bruce, pleading. Bruce, we need all the help we can get. We close in on Bruce's eyes. They squint. He flips around and approaches Barbara Gordon menacingly. For a moment, she shrinks before standing up straight, defiant. Bruce extends his finger and taps it hard on her shoulder. His voice is deep, raspy, ordering. You stay close. Bruce turns to Robin with a sly grin. No, Nat. As Bruce presses on, Robin follows, shaking his head in agreement. You're the boss. We cut to the Batsuit Vault opening as Danny Elfman's iconic score begins to build steam. Batman and Robin step in. Boots are clicked into place. Gloves tightened. Belts fastened. Batgirl's leather jacket is spray painted with a yellow bat symbol. She zips the jacket up and tightens loaned armor pads around her knees and elbows. Batman-style gloves and boots finish off the look. All three emerge, fully suited, as the music reaches a crescendo. Inside the Batcave Tunnel, the newly remodeled multi-amphibious Bat Ski Boat and Robin Cycle race down the pavement, flanked by Batgirl Cycle. They burst out of the tunnel and into the Birchwood Forest. Elsewhere, we cut to Inca speeding down a forested highway in a black luxury car. Inside, she frantically dials a car phone. It continues to ring. 
Inca grits her teeth in frustration. Come on, come on, come on! Pick up the phone! The phone clicks. Chip's voice chimes in. It is a rough road that leads to the heights of greatness. Please be great and leave a message. Ugh! Inca tosses the phone across the dashboard and grabs the steering wheel with both hands. The speedometer reads a max speed of 110 miles per hour. She scans the rearview mirror. The Batsky boat, flanked by the cycles, barrel down behind her. In one swift move, the trio pass around her and zoom off into the distance, leaving her in the dust. She screams. Damn it! Meanwhile, Chip examines his ringing phone and puts it away. Inside the Gotham Dam Tower, a large round device, reminiscent of a bomb, is packed into a crate. Get that down to the power plant. Yes, sir. Freeze watches, confused as the men haul the box away. He turns to Chip, who's busy reapplying some concealer makeup over a fresh crack on his forehead. What is this? The future, my friend. The future. Freeze grabs Chip by his suit and slams him against the wall. And what of my future? Freeze glances at Nora in the corner, still frozen in time inside the cryotube. Careful. A green light glows beneath Chip's suit. The hum of radioactive fire reverberates against Freeze's armor, rattling it. Freeze pauses as Chip continues. You're a wanted man. You want to spend your honeymoon hunted like an animal? I can give you that. Or I can give you a way out. No cops, just her. Freeze frowns, clearly uncomfortable with all of this. Chip smiles. You're calm. Freeze takes his hands off him. The humming glow subsides. Chip dusts his suit off as a goon calls down from above. Hey, boss! What? We got company! Looks like the entire force! Freeze glares at Chip. No cops. Chip sheepishly grins with embarrassment. Work of the Batman, no doubt. He calls out to the gang. All right, suit up, boys! He turns to Freeze. We're gonna have a snow day. Out on the reservoir, a fleet of police boats stand by, lights flashing. On the lead boat stands Acting Commissioner Akins, flanked by Sergeant Robert. He stares through a set of binoculars. Yup. They're there all right. Just like the bats said they'd be. Akins puts down the binoculars and glares at Robert. He picks up a walkie-talkie and presses a button. Send them in. Around him, the fleet of police boats rev up and push out towards the dam, leaving the command boat behind. Back at the tower, the goons stare out at the oncoming fleet. The lookouts get panicky. What are we gonna do? Freeze passes the goons and steps out onto the ledge of the tower. Cold indeed and labor lost. He charges his ice rifle. Farewell, heat, and welcome, frost. He pulls the trigger, unleashing an ice beam which shoots over the lake. Freeze swings the beam to and fro, covering every spot he can. At every impact zone, ice crystals fan out over the water like turquoise tentacles. Together, they bind to form a solid sheet of ice. Soon, the entire lake is frozen. The police boats grind to a halt amidst the crackling ice. Some officers try to abandon ship and proceed on foot, but soon slip and fall on the ice. Sensing an opportunity, Chip's goons surge forward with cleated boots. Using their Tommy guns, they unleash hell. The cops are now hopelessly pinned down in a firefight. Akins watches through his binoculars as the police barricade themselves around the boats, vainly shooting at anything that moves. He lowers his binoculars down and examines his own situation, stuck in the ice as well. He beats his fist against the ship's wheel. Damn it! He signals to Robert. Call for backup. Robert looks out over the horizon and points. I think it's here! Akins points his binoculars to the far shore. On an old road leading into a small beachhead, the bat ski boat and cycles race down towards the water. Robin notices the icy lake. The lake is frozen! And? That's fine for us, not for her! Batman grimaces and shifts his eyes, annoyed. <sighs> She'll have to ditch the bike. Robin turns towards Batgirl. Can you jump? Batgirl slides in close with her bike and nods. Yeah? All right, ready? One, two, 
free! Batgirl jumps off her bike and onto Robin's. Robin swerves to correct as Batgirl watches her old bike flip and shatter into the woods. She sighs. Goodbye, old friend. She turns her head and sees a faded sign advertising a long-abandoned water stunt show. Scanning ahead, she spots a rotting wooden ramp at the end of the road, leading into the frozen lake. An old stunt ramp. Robin shouts. Hold on! The bat ski boat and Robin cycle fly into the air. Both Batman and Robin hit flashing buttons in their respective machines. In midair, the wheels retract and giant skating blades fly out with a loud shing. The vehicles land. The Robin cycle is now a snowmobile, while the bat boat skates like a hockey puck from hell. Together, they barrel toward the gun-wielding criminals. As they pass the stranded police flotilla, the cops applaud and cheer. Batman and Robin flip a series of buttons. The bat ski boat extends a series of metal flaps at its nose, clipping multiple criminals in the legs. They tumble like dominoes. Robin's snowmobile fires a series of bolas, which wrap around the criminals' arms and send them flying to the ice. With the firefight ended, they push on. Chip watches from the base of the tower, flanked by goons. He grumbles angrily and runs to a platform boasting a ballista-style gun. He steps behind it and swings it wildly, firing disc-shaped objects into the air. The objects land on the ground and blink red. Soon the frozen lake is lit up like a runway. Inside the bat ski mobile, the computer readout displays the words, Landmines Detected. Batman contacts Robin. Get ready for a slalom. Robin squints his eyes and nods. I see it! Robin turns to Batgirl. You gotta be my eyes! Batgirl nods. She stands up as high as she can, hovering well above Robin's shoulders. She barks out orders and clings to Robin's armor for dear life. Left! Right! Right! Left! On the ice, the bat ski boat and Robin's snowmobile swerve left and right as small landmines explode. Chip watches from the tower and grumbles. He signals to Freeze, standing up above. A little help here? Freeze nods and fires his rifle at will. Down on the frozen lake, giant icy shards rise up like massive porcupine spikes. Batman and Robin continue to dodge the obstacles. By now, they're coming perilously close to the tower. Chip's eyes widen in temporary panic. He resolves himself with boiled over rage. That's it! Chip signals a goon, who brings over a comically oversized bazooka. Chip hoists it over his shoulder and fires. A massive rocket flies out over the lake and lands in front of the bat ski boat, blowing a massive hole in the ice. Batman grabs the wheel with both hands and grits his teeth, bracing for impact. Robin and Batgirl watch in horror. They both shout, No! The bat ski boat slams into the water and disappears. Robin slides the snowmobile to a stop at the water's edge. He stares down into the water and looks out toward the tower. Chip's laughter echoes across the ice. Robin sneers. That girl slaps him on the shoulder. Come on! Robin revs up the snowmobile and starts detouring around the massive crack in the ice. Meanwhile, at the base of the tower, Chip stares out at the empty ice. He turns and shrugs to his men. Well, I guess that's that. Below them, the ice starts to rumble. They steady themselves. Just up ahead, a series of missiles burst through the ice and explode, sending snow and water in every direction. Through the flurry of snow and ice, the bat ski boat lunges out of the water with a massive splash. It crashes to the icy floor and scrapes its way to a long, slow stop. Chip watches defiantly as it finally rests near his feet. There's a pause. The Batsky boat cockpit slides open with a long whir. Batman steps out and glares at Chip. Then his eyes survey the scene. The goons have fallen over from the impact of the crash and are scrambling. Chip considers his options. He runs for the tower. Batman shakes his head in angered frustration and gives chase. Chip makes it to the metal door at the base of the tower and slides through. He turns to his men. Seal it up. The men bar the door. Chip turns to Freeze. Let's go. Freeze stares at Nora's cryotube. Nora! Later! Chip grabs Freeze forcefully by the arm and shoves him toward an elevator door. Together, they enter. 
is a tight squeeze. As they jostle for room, a small blue glowing orb drops from Freeze's suit. It rolls outside the elevator door. A grenade! Freeze reaches for it, but Chip pulls him back. Outside the tower, Batman runs towards the door as Robin and Batgirl drive up. He pulls out a batarang and hits a red button. It says, Explosives Armed. He flings it at the door. Inside the tower, the metal door explodes. Batman, Robin, and Batgirl rush through. The room is quiet. Empty. Batman nods toward the elevator. Robin presses the down button. It blinks, then shuts off. He punches it. Damn! They fried the system! Batman notices the glowing orb. He picks it up. He stares at it, then turns toward a large diagram on the wall. It depicts a giant intake pipe leading from the tower down into the lower levels of the dam. He looks at the floor. A grate. Beneath it, the sounds of rushing water. He lifts the giant grate. Batman, Robin, and Batgirl gaze down into the bottomless water intake pipe, fed by small waterfalls lining the sides. Batman examines the glowing blue orb and hits a button. He tosses it into the abyss. A small blue explosion light flickers in the darkness. The wet concrete walls of the pipe freeze into solid ice. Robin stares at Batman, confused. Now what? Jump. Down there? What if it leads to certain death? You want a net? Robin glares angrily at him. Batman responds with a psychotic grin. He jumps feet first. Robin and Batgirl exchange looks. Robin sighs. What I want is decent workers' compensation. He jumps. Batgirl follows. We follow the three of them down the endless shaft. Below, Batman begins to see a light. He sees a section of the pipe where it curves to straighten out like a water slide. The three of them hug the wall as they approach the curve. Finally, they slide down harmlessly into the horizontal section of the pipe. The three begin to breathe a sigh of relief until they notice something. Up ahead, a giant turbine spins across the massive icy tube. All three try to slow themselves with the cleats of their boots. Despite the kicking and scraping, they can't slow down enough. Batman takes his hands and places them on Robin's and Batgirl's backs. He judges the timing of the blades as they draw closer. Steady. Closer. Steady. Nearly there. Go! Batman leaps forward, shoving them towards the giant turbine. They fly miraculously through the gaps between the blades and roll out through the other side. They stand up. Huh, not even a scratch. Batgirl holds up Robin's cape. A whole corner slice is missing, cut cleanly by the blade. He frowns. Huh. We cut to topside. Ika's car slams through a metal gate and squeals towards the dam. Back inside the dam, we cut to a large metal pipe with a steel plate bolted to it. A gloved hand punches the plate out. Batman, Robin, and Batgirl hop out. They find themselves in the center of a massive room, sporting giant cylindrical electric generators which hum endlessly. On the periphery are pipes, wire tubing, and catwalks, a maze of industry. In the center of the floor is a large cut hole. A small computer terminal sits next to it, they walk towards it. A voice rings out. Chip. If you're looking for the tour, you're a little late. Come back tomorrow. They turn to see Chip Shrek atop one of the generators, flanked by Mr. Freeze. The trio step toward him. Chip fires a revolver. Uh -uh. Batman tosses a batarang. It hits Chip's gun, which fires off a single shot that ricochets across the room. The revolver hits the floor at the trio's feet. Robin grins. Give it up, Chip. It's over. Chip smiles smugly and snaps his finger. A small army of goons swarms onto the catwalk below him. Machine guns pointed down at the three vigilantes. The trio check their exits. A smaller group of six gunmen surrounds them at ground level. Machine guns also drawn. Over. <laughs> Afraid not. See, this is just the... The sound of distant door crashing interrupts Chip. A loud clanging echoes off the walls. Everyone watches silently as Inca sprints as fast as she can down a long catwalk. Finally, mercifully, she tumbles to a stop in front of Chip. She hunches over to catch her breath. <sighs> Sir! Uh, there! 
She stares down in shock at Batman and his crew, surrounded by goons. <sighs> Here. Well done, Inca. Now sit down before you fall down. She nods and steps back, embarrassed. As I was saying, this is just the beginning of a brand new career. What are you talking about? Urban renewal. Robin and Batgirl exchange a look and stifle a laugh. <laughs> yeah? And how are you going to convince city council? They'd sooner trust a termite. What if they had no choice? <laughs> That's crazy. You'd need... What? A disaster? That's right. And it's sitting right beneath our feet. Batman eyes a giant black ball with a timer on it. A bomb. It's suspended high above them from a chain. He looks down. The bomb is positioned directly over the hole. Chip grins as Batman puts it together. The 101st Street Fault. Bravo! See, it's always the quiet ones. Of course, it's useless. Unless you drill a giant hole underneath the reservoir. Batman turns to see a goon sitting atop a giant, mud-encrusted drill. The goon sarcastically salutes. And then fill it with a million gallons of destabilizing toxic sludge. The trio watch as a couple of goons walk in with an oil drum and kick it over into the hole. Hideous black goo gurgles out and plunges into the bottomless pit. Got that little tip from one of my oil companies. But why? Why indeed. Chip points to the dangling bomb above their heads. Cause with the right amount of firepower and a little homemade plutonium. He pulls out a small polished rock speckled with green and yellow flecks. A soft emerald flame emanates from Chip's hand, making the rock glow a soft orange. Freeze stares at it, horrified. Chip crushes it in his hand. Kaboom. Batgirl lifts her visor and whispers in terror. Earthquakes. That's right, little lady. But not just any earthquake. One powerful enough to bring this whole dam down. Washing away Gotham's elite. Those scum who treat me like a pariah while they sip champagne in their riverside mansions. Well, now they can sip it out the sea. Then the city will fall. Batgirl whispers to herself. Grandpa. Freeze turns to Chip in shock, his eyes calculating as he takes in the insanity of it all. So that's your great business plan? Death and destruction? Not destruction. Construction. Robin mutters to himself. Got the con right. With the infrastructure I've gathered, I'll build a new Gotham, even grander than my father could have imagined. Power plants, desaltonization systems, disaster relief, affordable housing, stores! All fast-tracked, making me Gotham's humanitarian of the century. Hell, maybe I'll even run for mayor. <laughs> President? Freeze whispers to himself. What have I done? Chip hears him and pauses. What? You'll kill thousands. Hey, you wanted freedom, this is what it costs. Haven't you ever made an omelet? Batman calls out to Freeze. He looks down below. Freeze! Is this the legacy you want? Is this what Nora waited for? Enough! Freeze steps in front of Chip, cutting off his view of Batman. I couldn't agree more. Ah, uh, you know, I knew you'd say that. That's why I sent your confession to the cops. We cut to the frozen lake where Aikens holds up a handwritten letter with the header, A Condemnation of Gotham and All Its Sins by Dr. Victor Freeze. Aikens watches, helpless as the cops brave the ice at a snail's pace. He grumbles into his walkie-talkie. We need to move faster! Back at the tower, Chip taunts Freeze. Don't worry, I used a lot of fancy words. Freeze points his rifle under Chip's chin. The rifle charges with a buzz. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you where you stand. Chip pulls out a remote and presses a button. Above them, the chain holding the bomb stirs. It starts lowering with a clickety-clack as the timer on the bomb begins counting down. 
At the computer terminal below, the trio of heroes watches as the terminal flips on, also reciting the countdown. Because you're gonna spend the next 15 minutes getting your blushing bride out of here. Freeze looks down as two goons wheel Nora's cryo chamber into the room and set it down. The crooks look up at him and sneer with glee. How would you rather she fry? Freeze loses himself in thought. Finally, he glares at Chip. You've made one grave miscalculation. And what's that? I could never look her in the eye after knowing what I have done. Freeze springs to life and tries to shoot Chip. But Chip flings the rifle away and flips around, pinning Freeze's arm behind his back. Chip has him in a headlock now, but barely. The two struggle as the goons keep their guns trained on Batman, Robin, and Batgirl. The goons are visibly sweating, nervous, not sure who to train their guns on. Chip taunts Freeze. That super strength of yours is pretty nice, huh? Too bad it won't be around much longer. Chip pulls out a small, orange glowing vial attached to a needle. Freeze's eyes widen with fear. You like it? A little something R&D put together for me. Should make you a little more human. Chip twists Freeze's hand with a loud crunch. Freeze drops to his knees in pain. Chip grabs Freeze's wrist tight, forcing his hand to open. Freeze's eyes look longingly at Nora and the cryotube. Now don't cry. It's all you ever wanted. Right? in the palm of your hand. The syringe hovers over Freeze's gloved palm, pressing closer. Suddenly, a whip crack rings out. Chip stumbles backwards, one hand covering his face. He looks up to see Catwoman standing on an iron beam above. It's then we see a large green gash across Chip's face, where Catwoman's whip had cut through his makeup. While distracted, Batman takes the opportunity to throw a batter ring at the syringe in Chip's hand. It flies up and lands at Batman's feet. He dives for it as Robin and Batgirl spring into action. Gunfire rings out in all directions. Some aim for the trio, others aim at Freeze. Meanwhile, Freeze fires his rifle at the goons flanking him. They all turn to ice in an instant. Freeze turns to see Chip and Catwoman. Chip stands ready to throw a punch, but Catwoman pulls out a stick of dynamite and a lighter. Nuh uh. Chip pauses and smiles. He blows a kiss Catwoman's way. It's laced with green fire. She screams and falls to the ground. The now lit stick of dynamite falls into the generator. It explodes, sending everyone flying. The goons scatter. Chip staggers to his feet as Freeze catches sight of him. He waves goodbye to Freeze and disappears into the maze of machinery. Freeze follows. Meanwhile, Catwoman finally manages to rip off her burning mask and tosses it to the ground. She stands up, singed but still alive. She turns toward the industrial labyrinth, hearing the sounds of Shrek and Freeze sprinting into the shadows. As her face blazes with anger, Batman calls out to her, Selina! Selina looks back. The trio of heroes, battered and dusty, emerge from the smoke. Batman stares at her, his eyes grave. She stares at him coldly. A clink. A smoke bomb bursts at her feet. When it clears, she's gone. Batman turns to Robin and Batgirl. Come on. Batgirl stops him. Wait, you go ahead. But- I can disable the bomb. You stop Shrek. Batman squints at both her and the iron jungle which Shrek fled into. He nods to Batgirl. Do it. Robin pulls Batman aside. Wait, 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 wait. You said stay close. And you said trust her. So which is it? Robin hesitates and looks at Batgirl. He sighs and nods. Good luck. You too. They exchange a brief longing look. Batman grabs Robin by the arm. He finally looks away as they head into the maze of generators and machinery. Up ahead, a goon stops Shrek. What do we do? Shrek sees Freeze emerging through a curtain of steam. You're the pawn. Defend the king! He pushes the goon toward Freeze. Victor fires his rifle, freezing the goon and moving on. Back at the computer terminal, Batgirl slides into place. After flipping up her visor, she pulls out a small compact container and starts dabbing a brush in a powdery solution. She applies the brush to the terminal's keypad. Forensics don't fail me now. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin dive into the steam and ductwork. 
goons open fire. Batman turns to Robin. Divide and conquer. They split up. As Batman and Robin are pinned down, Chip finds a stairway to the top and starts climbing. Back at the computer terminal, Batgirl examines the keypad. Fingerprints are splattered all over it, but four keys display the most hits. One, two, four, and nine. She looks at a digital readout, six spaces. Four digits, six number combination. She scrapes her glove along the number two, noting it seems to be worn more. Two is repeated. She notes the countdown clock, nine minutes to go and counting. She sighs and starts pressing the suspect numbers, followed by the red disarm key. It buzzes. The readout says fail. She punches again. Fail. Again. Fail. Damn it! I hope they're having better luck. Near the stairway, a goon opens fire on Robin. As he flees, he runs right into Batman's fist. Up above, Chip reaches the top of the stairs. He gazes over the ledge. The stairway is empty. He smiles and turns toward the catwalk. Freeze is waiting for him, cutting off any escape. Chip frowns. His hands glow. He gathers up all his energy into a green atomic fireball and lobs it at Freeze. The fireball hits a pipe instead. An explosion of steam hisses in Freeze's face. Victor fires his rifle, turning the steam into a harmless ice cloud. He punches the cloud, shattering it into a million pieces. With deadly intent, he steps forward. What is the disable code? Chip flashes an evil grin, grits his teeth, and lunges with a scream. Ah! Below, Batman makes short work of two fleeing goons and rejoins Robin. The two ascend the stairs. Up above on the catwalk, Chip unleashes another fireball, barely missing. Freeze switches his rifle to rapid fire mode and unleashes pellet shots onto the steel trellises above. They form deadly icicles which fall under the weight. Chip looks up and dodges the incoming hail of frozen arrows. Picking up speed, he jump kicks Freeze in the chest. Freeze falls back onto the railing. It snaps. He grabs the catwalk for dear life. Chip smiles. We cut to Batgirl, sweating now as she pauses for a moment. Think, damn it! He's a narcissist. It has to be something important to him, but what? Up above, she hears Chip cackling. Batgirl turns toward the distant tower and sees Freeze dangling. She grits her teeth, punching in more numbers. Focus. Focus! Chip spots Batgirl far in the distance. He picks up a sharp icicle and stares at both Freeze and her. Oh, decisions. He settles on Batgirl, lifting the icicle behind his shoulder as if he were throwing a javelin. Just then, a Chinese star hits him in the hand. He looks up to see a shadowy figure in the iron trellises. Catwoman, no doubt. He tosses the icicle at her. She jumps out of the way, snapping her whip and swinging to another beam, dangling like a mouse on a string. Freeze reaches up with his other hand, but Chip steps on it. He stares into Freeze's eyes, and then glances down at Nora's cryotube, gloating. You know, I was gonna be nice and just pull the plug. But maybe I'll wake Sleeping Beauty up and take her as a wife. You never know. She might be grateful. Rage consumes Freeze. With his other hand, he pulls out his rifle. He takes aim at Chip's head and says with sad resignation, For Nora. He pulls the trigger just as Chip lunges back, taking his foot off Freeze's hand. The ray hits a steel beam just above Chip's head. Victor falls with a loud scream. He lands not far from Batgirl, startling her. Up above, the frozen steel beam cracks and shatters. Chip leaps out of the way as part of the ceiling crumbles with the beam, sending brick and debris tumbling below. A broken freeze shields his face from the oncoming onslaught, but it's useless. The rubble buries him. His rifle sticks out of the pile like a tombstone. Up above, Chip examines the gaping hole in the catwalk and then turns tail and runs. The catwalk squeaks as he sprints toward the exit. We see the bolts are coming off the wall hinges. Selena watches, still dangling. She looks up at the hole in the ceiling and begins to climb the whip. 
Just as Chip exits, Batman and Robin make it onto the catwalk. The wrong side. They examine the gap, look at each other, and nod. Together, they sprint and jump. Just as they land, the bolts affixing the catwalk to the wall snap. The catwalk swings down into the wall. They hold on tight. Robin shouts, Holy sh Crash! Shoddy construction! For an instant, they hang in the air. The catwalk slides completely off the hinge. They land on the ground as it topples over. After dusting themselves off, Robin turns to Batman. What now? Batman glares silently at the door next to them. It's marked, stairs. Robin sighs. Ugh, lame. They open the door and begin running up the tightly wound staircase. Meanwhile, at the computer terminal, Batgirl continues punching numbers, getting more frustrated. Come on! In mid-entry, Batgirl gets thwacked with an iron bar to the face. The impact flings her helmet off and sends her flying into the debris. She lays helpless, blood trickling from her lip. The last thing she sees through her mess of red hair and war paint concealed eyes is Inca, brandishing a rusty iron bar. Inca sighs. Damn it. She tosses the bar with a loud clang. I thought you were the cat. Batgirl passes out. We cut outside, 50 stories up. Now at the crest of the dam, in the middle of the tiny road atop the dam's wall, Selina Kyle emerges through a storm grate. She's still suited but without her mask. Cautiously, she walks down the center line. She looks around, hesitant. Despite her feline grace, her heels click loudly, echoing off the canyon rock face and cement walls below. Suddenly, a light at the end of the road switches on, blinding her. She turns away, shielding her eyes. Through the light, we can make out the shape of a cement truck. A voice rings out in distant echo. Looks like I picked up a stray, but who? Selena turns and faces the cement truck, bringing her face into the light. She smiles defiantly. Chip leans out the truck window, squinting his eyes. Is that? <laughs> Selena Kyle, what brings you back to town? Looking to finish a job. Sorry, sweet cheeks. We're not hiring. The truck starts up with a guttural growl. Selena grabs her whip. The truck peels out of park and barrels towards her. At the last second, she hurls herself out of the way. The truck fishtails and skids to a stop. Chip looks through the windshield. Nothing. What the hell? Catwoman's feet burst through the back window. She slides in and wraps her whip around Chip's neck. His foot steps on the gas and the truck veers wildly. Not far off, we follow Batman and Robin as they near the top of the stairway. Just as Batman reaches the door, Robin says, Are we there yet? A cement truck tears through the wall, sending Batman and Robin into a pile of orange barrels and other construction equipment. Meanwhile, back in the power plant, Inca slams Batgirl onto the ledge overlooking the gaping hole. Batgirl looks behind her. A yawning chasm awaits, with a dangling bomb situated just below them, dropping inch by inch with every passing second. Inca mocks her. I suppose it's fitting that the toxic sludge down there is black. Matches your outfit. Business 101. Always coordinate. Batgirl pushes back, struggling. Christ! I hate fashion police! She knees Inca in the stomach and flips away from the edge, standing up. Inca smiles and lunges at her. Ugh! Back on top of the dam, Robin grabs his sides and groans. He sits up and scans the orange barrels, flashing barriers and fences. <coughs> <coughs> Ugh, I hate construction. Batman and Robin stand up and watch as the truck slams on the brakes. Inside the truck, the sudden stop sends Selena flying over Chip and through the windshield. She groans, barely conscious. Chip tugs at his seatbelt. He says dryly, Buckle up, bitch. Meanwhile, in the power plant, Inca swings a two by four at Batgirl. A miss. Batgirl shouts, Are you crazy? If I don't disable that bomb, we both die. Inca swings again. Miss. <laughs> you think I don't know how to operate that thing? Don't worry. 
I'll add a few extra minutes after I'm done with you. Inca swings, but Batgirl karate chops the lumber, breaking it in half. Batgirl does a backflip kick. How noble! We cut back to the truck. We close up on Chip's foot smashing the gas pedal. The truck roars down the street on the dam's crest. Batman and Robin rush toward the vehicle. Robin notices the body on the hood. Is that? Batman grimaces with anger and picks up the pace. Inside the truck, Chip laughs. If there's anything my father taught me, it's always find a higher window. The truck heads straight for the barrier, separating the road from the dam's edge. Chip slams on the brakes. The truck crashes through, its front tires halfway over the edge. Selina flies over the hood. Her claws latch onto the bumper. Chip throws the truck in reverse. It squeals and skids as rubber burns. Selina loses her grip as the truck pulls back. She lands just off the edge and begins to slide down the top of the dam. Her arms scratch and scratch at the cement walls. As the truck continues to reverse back, Batman and Robin slide to the edge. As he slides, he grabs Selina's whip, which had fallen to the ground in the melee. He casts the whip towards Selina with a loud snap. It lashes tightly around her wrist. She screams in pain but grabs it. She looks down. It's a 50-story plunge. She sighs with relief. Back in the power plant, Batgirl and Inca trade blows. Batgirl grabs her helmet and repeatedly bashes Inca in the chest with it. Inca retaliates with a roundhouse kick that sends Batgirl flying over to the computer terminal. She stands up, clutching her chest. Roundhouse kick. Nice. She stands up and raises her fists. Inca rolls her eyes and pulls out a revolver. Now that's just cheating. Inca raises an eyebrow and smiles. She pulls the trigger. The gun clicks. Empty chamber. Batgirl runs for the computer console. Inca fires five shots, barely missing each time. The fifth bullet grazes Batgirl in the shoulder. A flesh wound, but enough to knock her over. Batgirl stumbles on all fours, reaching for the console. Inca aims with a loud click. Stop! Batgirl sighs. Inca motions with the gun. Now, get up. Slowly. Batgirl slowly stands. Meanwhile, at the top of the dam, Batman and Robin pull Catwoman up. Robin slaps her on the shoulder as she collapses to the ground. I don't know how many lives you got left, but I think you just spent most of them. Selina catches her breath. He's a Shrek. They're good at that. Robin looks around. Where is he? Behind them, a bright set of headlights flip on again. Tires start squealing. They turn to see the giant cement truck hurtling their way, driven by the horrific visage of Chip, whose face is now fully melting. Robin grabs Selina. He tries to grab Batman. Come on! Batman shoves the two of them out of the way. As the truck picks up speed, Batman stares it down, defiant. From the pavement, Robin and Selina watch in shock as Batman extends his arm and beckons Chip with his index finger. Inside the truck, Chip laughs as the last of his false skin flakes off, revealing the skull underneath. Yeah, tough guy. Come on. Let's see you can go distance. Come on! Come on! As the truck closes in, Batman tosses two small black orbs. They crack open like eggshells, sending dozens of small spikes scattering across the road. The truck runs right over them. The tires pop. The truck lurches forward as the wheels spark. Chip steers wildly trying to maintain control. Just as the truck is about to swing into him, Batman flings open his cape, sprouting temporary glider wings. His boots light up with a short burst of fire, rocketing him up into the air. Chip stares up through the windshield as Batman glides above the truck and lands on the roof. Then, out of the blue, Batman's cape drops over the open windshield. Chip can't see. He pulls out a pistol and gets off a couple of shots through the cape, but it's too late. The truck swerves wildly. The gun flies out of Chip's hand and lands on the street. In the nick of time, Batman jumps off, just in time for Chip to see its final destination, a small refueling tanker. Chip screams. The truck sails into the fuel tank. Everything explodes in a massive fireball.
Meanwhile, back in the power plant, the whole place rumbles from the sound of an explosion. Batgirl and Inca look around as plaster falls. Inca smiles, moving in closer with the gun. Aw, looks like we're missing the party. As Inca looks away, Batgirl reaches slowly for the console. Inca raises her gun again. Don't bother. You'll never figure it out. You know what I can't figure out? Why someone like you would partner with a misogynistic creep like him. You realize there's only one person he's ever going to share that ivory tower with. Himself. Inca laughs. You think this is about pride? <laughs> Never punch a gift horse in the mouth, honey. That jackass is my winning ticket for life. That's what this is all about? Money? Spoken like someone who's never had to live without it. Barbara shrinks back, the words stinging. Oh, did I hit a nerve? Justice is such an abstract concept when you're trying to survive. Some of us have to improvise. Back up top, Batman, Robin, and Selina slowly approach the raging fire engulfing the cement truck. Suddenly, Chip emerges from the flames, now completely blight in form. His fiery green skull radiates with rage. He growls at the trio in the middle of the road. That's the problem with this city. No matter what you do, you can't clean up the streets. He reaches into his pockets, pulling out hundred-dollar bills, which glow green and begin to catch fire. Here, let's throw some money at it. Blight opens the palm of his hand and blows. The bills fly toward the trio and combust amidst a giant green fireball. Batman grabs Robin and Catwoman. Together, the three of them duck under Batman's cape. Batman hits a button, activating the suit and cape. Robin does the same and closes the gap around them. The capes glow cobalt blue as the green fire envelops them. Blight ceases the flamethrower breath. He squints at the huddled capes, then cautiously approaches them. Suddenly, they stir. All three get up, steaming but unharmed. Blight screams with rage and marches towards them. As he approaches, Robin tries to strike first. You I don't care about. He knocks Robin out of the way. Selina tries next. You I will deal with later. He tosses Selina across the pavement. He points to Batman. You. He swings at Batman and lands a blow. You can never be bought. He kicks Batman. You can never be bribed. He elbow checks him, sending him to the ground. And you never give up. He picks Batman up by the neck. You're everything I hate. Back in the power plant, Batgirl continues to try to make sense of it all. So you had nothing. Big deal. What about Chip? All the schemes? All the murder? And for what? He has all the money in the world! But he doesn't have the world. Up above, topside, we see Batman take another blow. Inca continues down below. That takes power. High above again, Blight slams Batman to the ground, knocking him unconscious. Inca continues. Power he lost that one sad Christmas, when dear old dad kicked the bucket. He promised himself that would never happen again. And now he's going to make good on it. Up top, we see Blight loom over Batman like a tiger ready to consume its prey. We cut back to Batgirl and Inca. Of course. Christmas. What? That's it. Isn't it? That's the key. Don't be ridiculous. You can't hide it. Peel away that mask, and he's just another scared kid with daddy issues. For the first time, Inca looks worried. Batgirl flashes a determined grin. Back up top, Blight leans down over Batman. Let's see, who is the man behind the mask? He starts to lift Batman's mask up. Robin tries to pounce. Blight blasts him with a fireball from his hand. Catwoman tries the same and also takes a fireball to the chest. Alone now, Blight pulls the mask up, briefly revealing the face of Bruce Wayne. Blight lets go of the mask in shock. No, no, it can't be. I killed you! Batman's eyes open. 
He taps the side of his mask, bringing down his sonar goggles. He grabs Blight by the head and pulls him in close. He smiles, his voice becoming Bruce for an instant. Sorry to disappoint. The sonar eyes explode with a bright flash, blinding Blight. He lets out a scream. <laughs> Batman headbutts him hard. Blight flies back and stumbles, covering his eyes. He careens and lists like a ship lost in a storm. His feet stop right at the edge of the dam, overlooking the deep canyon below. He wipes his eyes and tries to make out the shapes before him. We see Robin step into view, then Batman, but in front of them both steps Selina Kyle. She bends down and picks up Chip's missing gun off the pavement. She points it at him. Don't move. Meanwhile, down in the power plant, Batgirl's eyes glance at the computer terminal. It reads two minutes. Time's running out. Batgirl notices Inca's hand is trembling. Sweat pours down her brow. You're sweating. Inca wipes the sweat from her forehead with her free hand. Her breath stutters. Your breathing is shallow. Nervous? You should be. Because you know I've got the code. And you've only got one bullet left. Inca trembles more, almost shivering. What? <laughs> How could you possibly? Seven chambers, one empty, six full. You fired five times, so one bullet left. Inca's eyes grow wide with fear. Batgirl nods with confidence. Better make it a good one. Inca steals her resolve and extends her trigger hand, aiming for Batgirl's head. I will. Inca slowly pulls the trigger. In the same instant, Batgirl grabs her helmet from the floor and holds it up to her face. The gun fires. The bullet ricochets, hitting Inca squarely in the clavicle. She screams from the impact and flies back, flipping over the hole in the middle of the room. Her hand grabs the ledge. Batgirl flies to the computer console. The readout enters 60 seconds and counting. Inca screams. Help! Batgirl shouts back to her as she punches in numbers. She enters one of the numbers wrong. God damn it! She rips off her glove with her teeth and tries again. Inca continues to plead. Please! Just one sec! On the computer terminal, a button suddenly flashes and buzzes. It reads, initiating drop. Batgirl screams. No! Inca looks up. The crane holding the chain detaches. The bomb drops, pulling the chain with it. The chain whips around the top of the apparatus. Inca's eyes open wide in horror. The chain slaps her hand. She slips, only holding on by a couple fingers. Horrified, Batgirl punches in the final two numbers and slams the red off key. The display reads 12, 24, 92, the date of Max Shrek's death. The readout says bomb disabled. Batgirl slides to the hole and extends her hand, but it's too late. Inca slips just short of Batgirl's grasp. As Inca falls, Batgirl stares over the side. A faint scream can be heard, followed by a soft splash. Down below, we see a hand stick up out of the sludge, covered in black ooze. It struggles, then sinks. Slowly, the bomb follows. There's a slight rumble. Up above, Batgirl grimaces at the sound. Then she holds her breath. Nothing. She rolls over and stares up at the ceiling, sighing with relief. Then she catches something out of the corner of her eye. In a debris pile far off in the distance, the rubble stirs. Reposing on the pile as a hand busts through. It's Freeze, suit dented and helmet showing cracks in the glass. Batgirl rolls away and puts her helmet back on as Freeze stumbles to his feet. He grabs his rifle. She runs toward him. Hey, hold it right there! He ignores her and walks straight past. She rushes up behind him and tries to land some blows. Freeze grabs her and throws her against a generator. She slides down, unconscious. Up top, Selina still has a gun trained on Blight. The hulking skeleton looks behind him at the drop, then back to her. Selina, do you really think you can kill me with that? You may be powerful, but you're not bulletproof. Blight turns to Batman. Bruce, you're a businessman? Surely you can see the importance of bringing the right people to the table? I prefer a slab. Batman steps up to Selina, 
his voice calming. Selena. He holds out the glowing syringe he swiped earlier, meant for freeze. Put that thing away. Take it. Turn him back to nothing and send him away to rot. In prison. We can't. He knows. And who will believe him? Max killed you. He killed me. Don't you see? Maybe this is our chance. To start over. Two ghosts with their whole lives ahead of them. Robin stares at him in disbelief. Selina shakes her head. You're lying. You'd never give this up. Batman puts his hand gently on the gun. Can you be sure? Tears well up in Selina's eyes. She falters. Her free hand touches his chest and moves down toward his hip. No. Her face turns grim. And that's why I can't let you do it. She plunges a claw into Batman's side. He stumbles back and pulls a claw out. She sighs. Old habits. Suddenly, Batman becomes dizzy. He stumbles to the ground, fighting sleep. Robin rushes toward her, but Catwoman slashes at him. He flies back, a scratch mark across his neck. Just like Batman, he stumbles to the ground, tranquilized. In the chaos, Blight tries to move, but Selina retrains the gun on him with lightning speed. Don't! Or oh, what? You think you got enough in there to finish me off? Only one way to find out. She fires two shots, taking him out in the feet. He kneels down. Ah, oh, not the pose. She fires two more shots, one in each arm. Blight grunts, defiant. That's four. Got any more? She points the gun directly at his forehead. Blight stares at the ground and laughs. <laughs> What's so funny? You should see yourself. He looks up, his flaming skull eye staring right through her. Max would be proud. She stares at Death's head with its sinister grin. She hesitates. Well, go on. Finish the job. Selina looks at him and stares at the revolver. She lowers her hand. No. I already lost a part of my soul to him. I won't lose what's left to you. Blight begins to stand, slowly healing. From ground level, we see the backs of Catwoman's heels. Two large metal boots approach. In a reverse angle, we see Mr. Freeze step in front of Catwoman, brandishing his ice rifle. You won't, but I will. Freeze fires the rifle at Blight's legs, freezing them in place. Blight clenches his fists and thrusts his chest forward. A green fire begins to surge. The ice starts melting. Freeze fires again and again, covering more and more of Blight. The skeletal figure grits his teeth as the fire grows. You will not stop me! Freeze turns a switch on the rifle. A needle on the gauge rises to the red zone, where it reads maximum power. He fires again, this time not letting up. As the firepower grows, both men shot at the top of their lungs. Freeze begins to shake violently as the power of the ice ray struggles against Blight's flames. Finally, Blight becomes sealed, just as the diamond in the rifle explodes. The whole gun bursts into fiery sparks. Freeze drops the smoking rifle and takes a knee. He looks up at Blight. The frozen body teeters on the edge. With a slow crack, it teeters over. We follow the frozen form down the side of the dam until it lands atop the ceiling of the power plant. Inside, Chip's frozen body lands on the internal industrial tower. The tower explodes. Up above, Selina watches, exhausted but content. Freeze breathes a sigh of relief. It's over. Out of nowhere, Batman springs up behind him and punches through the cracked glass of Freeze's dome. It shatters. He jabs the glowing syringe into Freeze's neck. Freeze grimaces in pain as the orange solution courses through his body. He convulses as the turquoise color drains from his face. Finally, he collapses to the ground. Down below, the industrial tower continues to spark and shoot flames. Lightning bolts and small explosions ensue. Finally, the whole power plant erupts. Up above, 
the lights go off as a giant orange fireball rises above the ledge of the dam. In the orange haze from the power plant fire, Batman kneels next to Freeze. Robin, meanwhile, scans the horizon. In the distance, a shadowy figure runs towards him. It's Batgirl. She shouts. Hey! Robin waves, ecstatic. Hey! The two collide and Robin spins her around. He sets her down and they embrace. She flips off her helmet and they kiss passionately as sparks and fireballs scatter in the air behind them. Batman watches with an imperceptible smile on his face. Freeze stares at them and smiles himself. Two star-crossed lovers. Batman looks down as Freeze turns to him. I deserve whatever hell has in store for me, but not Nora. She deserves so much more. Don't make her pay for my mistakes. If there is a way to bring her back, we'll see it done. Freeze lays back, his face awash in relief. He looks upon Robin and Batgirl again, smiling. Then come what sorrow can. Freeze passes out. Batman sighs, content. Meanwhile, Batgirl and Robin look out over the distant skyline, arms draped over each other. The lights of Gotham are off. It's almost beautiful. An entire city in the dark. Robin sighs. <sighs> it's gonna be a busy week. They laugh to themselves. In the distance, an army of cops break through the metal fence gate sealing the road. One after another, they start pouring through. They're led by former Commissioner Gordon, still in full uniform. Batgirl's jaw drops. He barks orders to the officers. You there, take the squad and clear out those towers. You set up a perimeter at the gates. I don't want anybody getting through. The rest of you, follow me. The officers split into teams. Robin shrugs. Huh. Guess you better go. Batgirl throws on her helmet and slowly disappears into the darkness. We cut to Commissioner Aikens finally climbing over the ledge of the dam from a ladder. Gordon extends a hand and helps him over the top. Jim? Michael? The two stare awkwardly at each other as more officers come up from the ladder. I hope this isn't a battlefield demotion. Nonsense. You wanted backup? You got it. Batman and Robin approach. Gordon extends his hand, signaling to them. In more ways than one. To be fair, we had a little help from the ladies. Batman glares at Robin. He corrects himself. A lot of help. Ah, never underestimate the value of teamwork. Am I right? Akins and Batman stare each other down. We'll see. We will. Batman walks away with Robin in tow. They both stand at the edge of the dam and spread their capes, activating glider wings. They jump. Akins reaches his hand out, thinking they'll plummet to their doom. He pauses as they ride the air and soar above the dam, vanishing into the night sky. He rolls his eyes and shakes his head before noticing a number of cops staring up at the sky. Still awestruck by the winged vigilantes, he snaps them out of it. All right, what are you waiting for? Call an ambulance and take Freeze into custody. You there, get public works on the line. As Akins wades into the sea of cops, Gordon forges his own path. He strolls casually along the street, taking in the chaos of one last night on the job. Out of the corner of his eye, he catches something. He glances up to the roof of the gatehouse. There stands Batgirl, helmet on, visor down. She stares at Gordon. He raises his hand to his temple and gives a nod and a casual salute. She nods and returns the salute before jumping off the roof and into the woods. We fade into a newspaper stand. Three bundles of different papers fall to the pavement. The first reads, Unexplained power outage attributed to the mastermind Chip Shrek. The second bundle falls, reading, Dr. Victor Freeze faces life in Arkham Asylum. The final bundle reads, Nora Freeze awakens thanks to Wayne Tech Cure. A newspaper boy cuts the twine binding the bundle. A pair of hands picks the top paper up. In a reverse shot, we see it's Bruce Wayne. He smiles, examining the headline, and pays for the paper. We cut to a shot outside of Gotham Memorial Hospital. Moving across the street, we see it overlooks Gotham Central Park. It's a gorgeous day. Rowboats in the pond, kids playing, couples strolling, 
but amidst all the hustle and bustle sits a blonde woman on a park bench, alone. She stares out across the pond as still as a statue, only tossing the occasional breadcrumb from a sandwich to the ducks. Pulling back, we see Lucius Fox staring at her, his hands on an empty wheelchair. Bruce approaches him and hands him the newspaper he bought earlier. Looks like we made some ink. You should send Knox a fruit basket. I'll do one better. We cut to inside the Gotham Globe building. Inside, Knox sits at his desk, tearing into a cardboard box with a letter opener. He reaches inside and pulls out a brand new camera. He stares at it like a boy who got a puppy for Christmas. He reaches into the box again and pulls out a piece of stationery with the bat symbol on it. In black ink, it says, no pictures. He laughs to himself. We return to the park where Bruce and Lucius continue to watch Nora. So, how's she holding up? All right, all things considered. It's not every day you wake up from a 40-year nap. It's a shock to the system. Seems to be walking now. Yep, all thanks to that serum. Well, what was left of it inside that syringe. Which I'm sure we owe to your friends in high places. Bruce nods, but I can't help but wonder if she'll be all right. We zoom in on Nora. We see now that she looks the same, but slightly older. A white streak in her hair dangles in front of tired eyes. Her hand strokes a younger portrait of Victor. A shadow suddenly looms over the portrait. She looks up. We cut back to Bruce. I don't get it. The doctors say she's progressing faster than any of us thought she would. That's the problem. Bruce, there's something you should know. We did a cellular analysis on her, and the cryosystem. Lucius's voice trails off, getting lost in the shouting that grows louder with every passing second. It's Dick, sprinting down the little path. Bruce! Bruce! Grayson stops in front of Bruce and hunches over, out of breath. Bruce grabs him by the shoulders and tries to stand him up straight. Hey, hey, hey! What is it? It's Freeze! I just heard it over the radio. He's escaped! What? Bruce turns toward the park bench. Nora is gone. He runs up to the spot where she was last seen and scans the surrounding park. Grayson joins him. They turn in circles, people everywhere, but no Nora. Bruce's face tightens up. Damn it. We cut to Gotham Police Headquarters. Inside, cops scurry around hauling in criminals and filling out paperwork. Bruce sits next to Dick inside a partitioned office. Commissioner Aikens examines a police file, addressing Bruce. We've put out an APB on Freeze and filed a missing persons report on Nora. Unfortunately, all we can do is wait. Do you have any idea who could have sprung him from Arkham? Security cameras were cut. However, forensics did find this. Aikens produces a plastic evidence bag. Inside, one of Catwoman's signature claws glistens. Bruce frowns and Dick shakes his head, unsurprised. Don't worry, we'll be scouring the city for her too. Outside, Bruce and Dick descend the steps of Gotham PD. The skies are now gray again. The streets are busy with rush hour traffic. Bruce sighs as Grayson shrugs. Now what? Bruce stares down the street, spotting a familiar face. Selena Cowell watches from behind a street lamp. Bruce angrily marches toward her, crossing the street with total disregard for his safety. Cars screech and honk. Robin apologetically waves them off. Bruce reaches Selena and grabs her forcefully by the arm. He shoves her into a concrete pedestal. A statue of blind justice looms above them. Staying busy? Enjoying the fresh air. Bruce squeezes her arm harder. What did you do? Selena slaps his arm off and barks back. What you couldn't. He needs to face justice. And what about her? Wasting away what few years she's got left as your trophy? Paraded around like a guinea pig for all the world to see? She has all the time in the world to move on once we're done with her. Hmm. Guess you didn't get the memo. Bruce grabs her by the neck, enraged. Where are they? Robin nervously looks around and tries to block them from view. He raises his hand up to Bruce and lowers it trying to get him to settle down. Bruce, ixnay, angling stray, oblate pay. Bruce looks around, suddenly realizing how exposed they all are out on the street. 
Selena grins. Quite the photo op. Bruce removes his hand. He asks again, quietly. Where are they? She smiles with a nostalgic twinge of sad resignation. I sure will miss that old fireplace. She kisses him on the cheek and casually saunters off. Figure it out, detective. As the click of her heels echoes slowly in the distance, Bruce thinks to himself. Grayson finally interjects. What the hell does that mean? Bruce says quietly to himself. Last place they were happy. We fade into the giant arched doorway of old Gotham Cathedral. The steps are fenced off. A sign reads, closed for demolition. One of the temporary fences is suspiciously knocked over. Inside, we pan down upon the empty church. Pews are empty and covered in dust. Debris lines the center aisle. Two small figures in wedding attire stand at the altar, dwarfed by the imposing Gothic architecture. Slowly, we follow a long line of faded stone statues, the saints, as they look down and bear silent witness. Their eyes pierce the shadows as the hollow voice of a woman echoes in the chamber. I, Nora, take you, Victor, to be my beloved husband, to have and to hold, to honor and treasure, whether through sickness or through health, for all the days of my life. Another voice joins, freeze. Then with this ring, I pledge my love and fidelity. We cut to ground level. The two figures seem impossibly far away. The groom turns toward the cavernous empty cathedral. His voice booms out toward the nothingness. And if anyone should so object to this union, let them speak now or forever hold their... A loud boom shatters the silence of the cathedral. The large doors swing open. In steps Batman. He marches like a sentinel, slowly, as if the footsteps of doom. Freeze turns toward the altar and kneels down as if in prayer. At his knees, tears drop on the dirty marble. Nora puts her hand on Freeze's shoulder as Batman ascends the steps, pausing behind Victor. He speaks, sad and grizzled removed of all youthful vigor. You've come to arrest one Mr. Freeze, but I'm afraid he's long gone. Freeze stands and turns, revealing an elderly man. Some 40 years past the Freeze that Batman last saw. All you'll find is a tired old man. Batman recoils in horror, his face reflecting abject shock. Victor laughs to himself. Judging by the look on your face, I'd say you're just as surprised as I was. But thanks to the peculiarities of the cryo-freezing process, it seems age has finally caught up to us. Batman turns to Nora. She now could pass for well over 80 an old woman with far too many wrinkles and worn silver hair. She stares at Batman with sagging eyes, fearful. She turns to Victor. Victor, who is this? Don't be afraid, my dear. This is the man who saved us. She turns to Batman and softly kisses him on the cheek. Then we owe you our lives. Which I fear I must now give up to pay for my sins. Nora gasps. She turns to Batman. No, please. Batman pulls out his bat cuffs. Tears well up in Nora's eyes. Reluctantly, Victor extends his hand. Batman cuffs it, but then lets the other cuff drop. He glares at Victor and turns away, stepping down off the altar. In shock, Victor calls out to him, asking, why? Batman turns and puts one foot on the bottom step. Because a wise man said, words are easy, like the wind. Then he gazes at Nora. But faithful friends are hard to find. Victor's eyes open wide. Bruce Wayne. Batman glares at him. 
Victor smiles, saving face for the both of them. <laughs> he must have told you that. Well, tell him from me that he's a good man, much like his father. Batman slips an almost imperceptible grin. He nods and turns, proceeding down the center aisle. Victor watches in awe, muttering to himself. Farewell. You shall be the last of humankind whom these eyes will ever behold. Up in the rafters, Batman looms in the shadows like a dark angel. He watches as Victor and Nora walk down the center aisle. The music is triumphant, but bittersweet. A wedding march twinged with sadness. They hobble, step by step, arms linked, content in their old age. As they disappear, Catwoman appears behind him. So is that what you call justice? No. And yet here you are. I'm surprised you didn't spontaneously combust. It is a church. Batman turns to face her. People change. Do they? I don't know. You tell me. They managed to find hope. Is it possible? We could do the same. Catwoman moves in close and kisses him. Slowly, their lips part. He stands there, caught up in her feminine snare. She smiles. Mm, if there's any justice in this world. She slowly steps back with a wink and backflips into the shadows. Robin enters the light, having witnessed the whole thing. I hate cats. <laughs> what about bats? Uh, I've learned to live with them. Does that mean you're staying? More or less but I have to forge my own path. So, this is the end for Batman and Robin. Not the end. Look, Gotham will always need Batman and Robin. It just doesn't always need Batman with Robin. Batman considers his words. He turns to Robin and extends his hand. And how about one last flight? For old time's sake. Robin flashes a cheeky grin and shakes on it. We cut to the steps of City Hall, where former Commissioner Gordon pins a new badge on Commissioner Aikens. They shake hands as the uniformed officers behind them applaud. In the gathered crowd, Barbara applauds with the audience. Aikens slowly moves toward the bat signal. Next to it is an axe. He picks the axe up and stares at the signal, then back to the axe, hesitating. Gordon looks on, nervous. Barbara holds her breath, Aiken swings his axe. It lands on the concrete next to the signal. Aiken switches it on. The signal beams to the sky, generating uproarious applause. Barbara exhales and joins the crowd in cheering. We close in on Alexander Knox over in the press circle. He snaps a photo of the lit signal and smiles to himself. Go get him. We cut to a quiet side street where Barbara Gordon slowly strolls down the road. She looks up and sees the bat signal, shimmering in the sky. She looks back down and spots Alfred by the Rolls Royce. He opens the door. I'm afraid it's only sparkling cider tonight, ma'am. She smiles. That's fine, Alfred. She gets in. On the seat is Barbara's motorcycle helmet and a meticulously folded, fully armored Batgirl suit. She holds up the brand new cape and cowl. Alfred watches in the rearview mirror as her jaw hits the floor. Unfortunately, our tailor is well beyond his years, but Master Wayne insisted a young lady should never be caught without the proper attire. She catches Alfred's gaze in the rearview mirror, stifling a joyful laugh. He's quite old-fashioned, you know. Master Grayson, too. They're quite the pair. On that note, I regret to inform you that they said they'd be a little late. Barbara smiles and pats her helmet sitting atop the suit. That's okay. I can wait. The music begins to surge as Alfred rounds a corner and drives off screen. We climb up into the skyline, fading into the ramparts of old Gotham Cathedral. Stone gargoyles, angels, and demons all fly by. With every ascending step up the impossibly tall building, the score grows more triumphant, finally culminating with ringing church bells as Batman and Robin stare out over the dark urban landscape. 
A statue of an archangel brandishing a sword in the scales of justice stands behind them, watching the dark nights. With the final gong, we fade to black. And that's how the frozen cookie crumbles. If you've made it this far, you've sat through what would be around a four hour movie, or think of it as a series. As I stated at the top of this tale, we didn't have any studio restrictions, so telling the entire story we wanted didn't have to fit into a traditional format. We hope our twists and turns kept you on your toes and entertained across the extended runtime. Your feedback is always appreciated and encouraged, so never hesitate to share your thoughts with us and the videos themselves with any Robins to your Batman. Fanscription will be back in our regular schedule starting next month, so you can look forward to shorter episodes on a more consistent basis this year. If there are any what-ifs you want us to cover, make sure to leave them in the comments. Check out our Fanscription podcast for audio versions of all our episodes, and a special Batman and Robin Q&A Rob and I will be doing later this year. See you soon, folks, and keep warm. It's a little chilly out there.